Hi everybody. I don't normally do videos, so please pardon me because I'm sure I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. Um, but there have been a lot of people who have asked a little bit about both building a spoon dragonfly and um, I found that when I started using Hobby Cane, I really couldn't find too much online to help me um, to go along and, and be able to wrap some of my pieces uh, with it. And I made up a way to do it myself. I don't know if it's right. Um, but it works for me, and so I thought I would share it with you. Um, I'm basically just using a dragonfly pattern that really just shows me more of the, the wings. Um, I've started one here already. I had my pieces cut out, um, and I've already done three of my pieces. I'm going to work on the fourth one uh, while you're watching. Um, I usually put a spoon in the center. Uh, today I'm going to be using this one I've already pre assembled it and, and have it ready. Um, a lot of times I'll take spoons, I'll cut the, um, take a hacksaw, and I'll cut it kind of right up at the spoon base. Um, some people like to leave the spoons on as the head. Uh, other people do all different types of things. Um, but I normally take them off and then I bend them over. Um, I don't know if you can see here. Um, but I bend them over so that it kind of is a little bit of a head and I'll have a place to tie off um, the dragonfly. The one I'm making today um, was so thick, I really couldn't easily bend it. So this is actually going to be one that's either a tabletop one, or I may put eyes on it eventually and put a little um, loop behind it. I'm not sure, but it's a little different than the ones I normally do where I'm already preset to go. And it would look kind of like, like that. Um, or like this. Um... Obviously, you're looking for a spoon size or shrinking of your pattern relative to, to the size you want to achieve. I have also found, funny enough, that silver plate or real silver, um, the solder will stick to, um, which think you'd think would be a really good thing, but it can really be hard to control sometimes, and you can sometimes get it into your pattern, and then there's no way to get it off. So I really do like the cheaper spoons like that you can get, you know, um, Oneida, anything that's stainless steel. And what I normally do is I um, foil. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I foil um, the area that I'm going to be attaching near. And not only am I really attaching, I actually use wire on the back side um, to, to give me the full attachment because this wouldn't be able to hold those wings. So just ways or ideas that, that maybe you can incorporate using silverware or something else into your pieces. Um, but the real big reason I wanted to make the video was to talk a little bit about hobby cane. Um, a lot of people use regular lead, um, you know, normal lead when they're doing um, their stained glass, whether they make the whole thing lead or they use the bigger channel sometimes around the edges if it's a big circle panel. Um, regular is just... When it's smaller items, it's just so big that um, it, it often makes the piece look really bulky. Um, so I like to use what's a hobby cane. Um, I think it's a 1 16th size. Um, I can always look that up for someone if they really need it. Uh, mine's from Cascade Metals. I actually, I think I use anything in stained glass. I buy mine by the spool. Um, and a spool will last me um, a good part of the year. Uh, when I'm doing a lot of sun catchers. Um, but anything that's my palm size or bigger, I'll use this small stuff. It starts getting to be really big in the pain. But once you start using it, a lot of you, when you see my pieces that I post, um, it's really flattering that you think that my soldering is all that great. Um, but what a lot of it really is, is uh, when you look at it, a regular piece, if you imagine this was soldered already, and a piece that has the, the lead already around it, it just looks like I have a nicer, bigger, thick um, type of, 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 of soldering joint because you're not sitting there holding it and being able to move it. But you'll see that it all around it is going to have the lead. It makes the piece heavier, but it makes the piece a lot more sturdy. So when I started, I really couldn't find too much on, on dealing with this hobby cane. Um, so... Really, what I do is, um, it could be completely wrong, but so far nothing of mine has fallen apart. But what I do is I, I like to take this um, and I stretch it, just like you stretch any type of lead, on my vise. Um, and then I usually use a putty knife 
to, um, which you can't see me off camera, but um, I'll use that to clean off my my nasty edges um, for the for the piece so that I'm ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my wiring. I just like the way of the look um, of the wiring and I figured it'd be a twofer where you can see me put on the, the hobby cane, but you can also see that I can actually put it on having this wire um, also around it and underneath that cane. So I use a pre-tinned wire. This one that we're pre-tinning today is a, I think it's a 16 gauge. Uh, no, it's 20. I'm using a 20 right now. So this is my smaller one. Um, and basically I just start by using my flux a little bit and attaching it where I want it. Again, that's really where I use that pattern I showed you at the beginning. Um, more just to try to kind of come up with what I want my wing pattern to look like. Um, you can also do a foil inlay, which looks really pretty. It takes a lot longer. Um, this is a pretty fast way of getting the idea or the look of having veins um, in your piece. Um, but whatever works for you is what works for you. So I just keep my wire cutters. I usually put the one piece down, you know, attach it. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, and then I kind of just kind of come in. It does get hot. Sometimes I put on a glove or you'll see me hold other things down to it when I'm soldering because that tinned wire will grab that heat no matter how far away it is from that soldering iron um, and draw it through that whole piece of um, metal. So sometimes I'll sit and, you know, kind of angle it. I probably should have done that one before I attached it, but it's really more just artistic and what you find that you want it to be. Um, I usually take my next piece and put it in my tins or put it in my flux. And um, what I just do is I kind of just figure out where I want my joint to be. And I just kind of hold it there and put a little bit of solder and let it harden back up. And then I kind of, from there, will take my nippers because I'm going to kind of see where it's going to hit that edge. I don't want it to go over the edge. I just want it enough onto that foil where I'm going to be able to tack it in uh, when I bring my solder over. Because this really is just attacking at this point for around the edges. So... If you can see that part here, um, you can see that little attachment now, and this is permanently attached. And then I'll just kind of come in again, flux that bottom, and hold that down, take a little bit of solder, and do a tack over to my edge. I do try to, like anything when you're, I know I'm coming back, I try not to leave too much around that edge because I'm gonna bring that um, hobby came around and I have one more piece I want to do to kind of have a vertical kind of coming up this way I find it easier to not pre-cut this because like I said it's so hot so my first one once I I get going I usually do just hold it with the spool still um, because I just find that I don't burn myself quite as much if I if I do it this way you can also play um, oops you can also, if you have enough of a hold, you can use as little or as much. You can draw that solder away, um, or you can leave, you know, some there um, as the vein connects. Whatever, whatever you like. As Bob Ross says, right? It's your world. Make it your, make it your own. And uh, again, I'm gonna come up here, a little more flux. Um, I use the gel flux. I use the liquid flux for 20 some odd years. And I just recently changed over to the gel flux, which I, I do like um, better. It just doesn't make as much of a mess. Okay, so for anybody who was interested, um, I know there was a form I had seen this last week that someone was asking how they, you know, put on these, um, these little veins. That's pretty much how you would do it into the pattern that you like. Uh, just use your tinned wire of whatever gauge you prefer um, and go to town. So at this point, this is where I come in with this hobby cane. And um, most of the time on most pieces I wrap all the way around, but with the heaviness of this, and then I'm trying to attach it to that piece of silverware, I found leaving this part blank where I can load, I'm gonna load up a lot of solder on the body, um, that it's a lot easier to just deal with it on the plain copper foil portion than to add all the way around on my caning. But if I'm doing a full 
um, sun catcher or something like that, I'd start from one end and go to another. I usually find a corner um, that's inconspicuous, tack it in, um, you know, and go around. Uh, what's nice about this comparative to a real lead or a, a, a normal size lead that I showed you here at the beginning is this little hobby cane is very forgiving. You can go around corners, in inside corners, outside corners, all sorts of stuff. Um, and it doesn't make that um, that bend. You know, you, you when you use regular lead, you have to keep cutting it at your um, real inside corners, at, um, at right angles, because if you were to come around, it would bulge. And so this doesn't do that to you. And so you get a real nice look. Um, you're going to want to find a tool or two, whether it's a fid or something else. Funny enough, I have a stake that I use that um, came with at the dollar store with a little, um, you know, outside, outside garden light um, that I put out in the garden. Um, well, I used the rest of the stake and I had this. I was going to throw it away, but darn, did it not have great angles on it for um, using, especially like my fid, but it's it's thicker um, and has more different angle pieces and even a notch that this fits into. Like you think it was made for it. Um, so that's usually my tool of choice, you know, but anything will work to help you get it in. So you're gonna find your starting point. And so for me, I'm gonna be kind of flush here at the top. I really do hope you can see this pretty well, but I'm gonna start right here at the flush and I'm gonna kind of just manually hold it and bend it with my hand. Um, just enough to hold it where I want it. Um, so that it stays nice and snug at that at that front corner. The channel's there just like lead, so it, it should just go nice and slide right into it. As I'm saying that, and I think using my mouth and trying to do the same time is a little trickier. Um, but I just want to get it in there enough. Yeah, let me go all the way around just a little bit. To this edge there, okay. I just want it to go enough that I can have it there put a little flux and tack it. Um, this is kind of sometimes can be the a hard part uh, when you're first trying to figure out how to do it. Um, you'll also see that I left my foil all the way around and a lot of times when we're letting and we're taught you know zinking and letting and all that around the edges you don't need to have your foil usually there except for at your connection points. Um, and what I found is I like to keep it there because it allows me um, to kind of make a full bead and kind of give you that illusion um, that a lot of you see when you're looking at it in a picture um, that I have just this really nice thick soldered edge around it. So at this point I have my hottie cane and I've wrapped it around. Right now it's still only tacked all the way up to that corner. So I'm just kind of getting it where I want. I'm manipulating it with my hands. Um, if it's a sharper corner than normal um, or something that's hard for me to get with my hands, I'll use my tool. It does scratch up, so you do have to be kind of careful um, if you're worried about that. And I get it where I want it, and you'll still see that you can still see my tin, or I'm sorry, my foil in some of the areas. And that's what I want. So I'm going to come to my other side now, the ending of it. Again, normally your end would be right at the same point, and you would, you know, finish off like normal. Um, but since I'm going to be doing these wings, my end is stopping at that one edge. And I'm going to come in and also tack that as well. So now it's on there, but just very, very loosely. Okay? And you'll see I also tacked it, and it went right on over these metal parts. Um, and what's going to happen is, as I solder, and I don't know that you'll be able to see it, so I'm going to try to show you here. Um, I solder a channel, you know, that whole channel down into here so that it looks like just one big soldered line. Um, and you can see it better here on this back. Um, and it just gives it a really nice professional finish, a nice look. It's heavy, you know, you don't have to worry about a client or yourself or anybody um, hitting it after it's all finished and or peeling um, that foil that you've soldered around the edges. Um, it just takes it to that next level. So at this point now, I take my flux again and I use these disposable brushes. I use them until they're just disgusting and then I get a new one. And I try to be careful because it will sometimes, if you when you're learning, it will come up and over. You might get a little bit onto your your lead. You know, you can clean it up somewhat, but it'll never be perfect. I mean, you can, you hold it to the edge and it'll suck it back. But um, you can see here, I 
bounced. Um, but I found that by the time I finish and I clean and I um, steel wool it, it may be a little bit there, but by the time I put my patina, because I pretty much patina everything, you just really don't notice it unless it's like right up on your main, main section. Um, and you probably could tin that as well if you really were desperate to try to keep it where if you were, had an area you just didn't like. Um, I necessarily don't worry about that because usually these are up in a window. And by the time I'm finished in the optical illusion of it, um, unless somebody is literally holding it in their hands and really, really studying it, they're not even going to notice it. So, oh, and there you go. See, I just dripped it right over. So, um, just exactly what we were talking about. It came up. So you just kind of come back, hold on the edge. I do keep my iron low. Um, and if you hold it down there, it'll pull and draw all of it off. I, um, have been using a Heiko or Heiko. And I actually solder at the 360 Celsius range. Um, I will go up higher if I am um, doing a repair or other things. But if I am sitting here with this leading cane and that kind of stuff, if I have it any higher than that setting, um, I will uh, burn right through that lead because it is lead and uh, it will melt. So keeping it at that 360 um you can still hold there for a little bit and it's it's not gonna damage you. If I find that it's just not running smooth like I want it to, I don't have enough flux. So I go back in and I flux and maybe pull a little extra and I just kinda come, I hope you can see this, and I'm dragging. Drag, 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 drag. Um, sometimes my little edges where I put my wiring might pop up, which is fine. Um, I just use something to hold it down as I'm coming by, add a little more solder, and just keep on going. Um, sometimes if I let it get too hot, it will kind of bleed through onto the other side, but that's okay. You can go back and fix it. Um, as we all know, the more you play with your solder, um, the better you get with it and the more you can do. But some days I just seem to have bad days and it just goes over that edge. I don't, I don't know what it is with me. And, uh, I don't know if it's the heat or other stuff. I did have that happen again. So again, I'm just gonna hold it to the side and it will all grab. You'll have a little spot there, but um, it'll be completely flat when you pull that. Um, so I'm gonna continue going around and just kind of trying to make that little bead where the hobby came hits my um, copper foil. Sometimes my copper foil doesn't show through. Um, I still try to put lead right on this edge. And um, it may not be as quite as pretty looking as I, as I like when it has the foil around it and I get a nice evenness to it, um, which is a lot of times why I'll use the bigger foil in this type of project. Um, but as long as I'm keeping it all the way on this top edge, because um, you got to think this is kind of a three-dimensional thing. So I want to have, I'm not putting my lead here, you can, or you, my solder here, like I said, you could, but I'm keeping it right on this top edge because when I do patina this, that's going to pull all that same color where, as you know, your lead is going to be a little bit different of a color black um, or, or whatever your patina um, that you're trying to achieve. So trying to make sure that at least this top part is covered um, will give me a nice set um, with the patina when I get to that point. So I'm kind of going through and doing that all the way around. And then it does get very hot like anything. I'm going to let it cool. And I'm going to flip it over and then do the same thing on this one. Um, I'm not going to keep you with me the whole way through. But my next part would be bringing in my spoon base. Um, for those of you who are interested. And as you'll see, I have it foiled. And this is foiled. And usually what I do is I actually have a piece of Oasis. And I started on the Oasis. Um, if you don't know what Oasis is, let me, let me get it. And I'll show you. A flower oasis like they use when they make flower arrangements you can wet it um, I don't test this it could very well be flammable it changes color on me but I do find that when I'm working on this type of stuff and I'm ready to start attaching everything a lot of times I can a if I'm using my type that is turned over like I showed you at the beginning I'll push that in um, to get this flat so so now I have a nice flat piece and I'm not going to end up with an angle when I'm attaching everything. The one I'm working on today really doesn't matter to that as much. 
but I'll figure out where my placement's going to be. Um, what I have to do. I'll cut and fix my foil however I want it. And then at this point, it's going to be a lot of decorative solder. So I'm going to come in and tack foil and tack all these as much as I can, um, filling in any little gaps, um, you know, that I have. Like you can see this one here is not perfect, so there's a little bit of a gap. Um, and I'll do that. Then I will come in with another piece of my um, ceiling tile, which is what I use instead of hemisote because I don't have any locally. Um, and like a sandwich, I'll come and flip it. So now the whole piece is going to be obviously flipped upside down like this, but tacked. Okay. Um, and I'm, hopefully you're kind of following along with what I'm trying to do and show you here. So at this point, your front would be tacked just barely, which is why I use the other piece to flip it so that now I have it backwards. And this is where I come in again with my wire. And I'm going to come in across here, probably across up here, you know, and one and twice here. So I'm kind of continuing that missing line. And then I'm going to fill this whole section, wire and all, with solder to give it that, that body base. Um, and that's how it becomes fully secure. You could probably throw this thing like a dagger at somebody and it wouldn't come apart. Then I'll come back to my front. And depending on the look, how well I did with the solder tacks and that kind of stuff, I will finish soldering in wherever my foil is because you're going to see that. And I may build up, I may come and do... Fancy soldering, put some dots or whatever else um, in there to finish the piece. So hopefully that kind of helps you out um, and you can kind of um, go from there. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, Hobby Came has really transformed my work from being just a hobby to something that looks really uh, nice and professional. So hopefully this will help you and uh, have a great day.